Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Dairy Focus. My name is Yara Somers, and I'm the veterinary advisor with Glambia Ireland. In this week's episode, we have a nice variety of topics for you. We'll obviously talk about the soil moisture deficit that is affecting most herds around the country. We will also touch on an increase in cell count and what you can do to monitor the cell count in your herd. And we will have a brief update on the breeding season so far, as well as some timely tips on what you can do to achieve the goals for the remaining weeks of the breeding season. As part of that breeding season, I would like to point out that any cows that still recover from lameness during the breeding season have a far better chance to go and calf by the end of the breeding season than cows that remain lame. And we will touch on the topic of lameness over the next few weeks of dairy focus. But it's just something to keep in mind at the moment. If you have a chance, try and get those lame cows seen to by a foot trimmer. Or try and treat those cows in order to give them the best opportunity, the best chance to go and calf um, this in the next couple of weeks. Also, most of you will receive the bulk tank herd disease screening reports. Use those reports to follow the trend of diseases in your herd. And at the moment, probably the parasite control is becoming more and more important. So keep an eye on those readings. And if you're an autumn calving herd, certainly use those readings. They are very valuable when it comes to drying off your cattle over the next two months. But now let's go to our friends at Dovea Genetics with an update on the breeding season so far and what to do for the remaining weeks of the breeding season. Dan Lynch here from Dovea Genetics. I'm here today to give you a quick update on the 2020 breeding season so far. I suppose submission rates have been excellent to date and we've seen here a huge interest in sex semen this spring already. With soaring temperatures forecast for the coming week, make sure to keep regular checks on both your cows and your vasectomize or stock bulls running with the cows. We recommend that you stay going for at least another few weeks with beef AI in your dairy herd. When selecting sires, keep an eye on your dairy beef index. It's a new index with the last year. And what it does is it, the overall figure gives you a balance between cavities, gestation length and carcass value, okay? We've some exceptional sires here in the Vey to choose from. Don't be afraid to ring some of our reps or any of us here in the Vey at any time to discuss your options for the dairy beef sires for this spring. Thanks for that. Very interesting stuff. Now, an horizon cell count is something that happens in most herds. And we'll go to John Fitzpatrick from our milk quality team who has some really good advice on how to monitor the cell count in your herd. Hello, my name is John Fitzpatrick. I'm a milk quality manager cover leash in North Kenny. I'm getting a lot of queries at the moment regarding cell count and cell count testing. Uh, first of all, what I'd say with the best protocol start with milk corn. For the information that you get back, it's, it's worth its weight in gold, whether it be your fats, your proteins, your, your cell count in general, and, and your milk yields. And um, so what I'd say would be to the two options to go for would be the DIY milk recording or to go with a technician out on your farm, which is all going ahead at the moment with uh, COVID-19 restrictions. So contact your local your quality rep, uh, whether that be your, your Munster or Progressive Genetics to get the ball rolling and get a milk corn started. Um, there's a lot of uh, information that's given back to you and a lot of stuff you don't even realise. Like I always say the rule of thumb is a good cow, bad cow, which would be you could think a cow was doing so many litres and she might be doing as well as, she, as you think it is at all. And the same, a bad cow might be doing a lot better than you think it is. And the only way to find out that information out is with milk corn. You can sample with ourselves. You can get bottles uh, from your local milk quality manager or your local branch. We only do cell count, in, uh, cell count individually. So the best procedure for that would be to strip out your cows well, draw into a jug and fill the bottle and put the number of the cow on top of the bottle. Just make sure and disinfect the jug between each, each sample to stop contamination. Uh, we're not taking in any samples into the factories at the moment because of the COVID-19 restrictions. So all samples have to go by haulers. So the best way to do would be to ring your driver or your hauler uh, the day before you're going to get your samples are your milk collected and get your samples collected with them and just make sure they're disinfected and clean and left out properly for your driver he can take them in uh, if your milk is ha happens to be collected before six o'clock in the evening uh, you will get your samples tested uh, next morning in Dungarvan but and you'll have results back out by all going well lunchtime or, or after lunch the, the following day 
Um, if you have, if you want your results fairly quick, uh, you can contact your local quality manager, or we can email them or send them on to you by, by WhatsApp if need be uh, within the, the following day. Um, if you get your results back, then what I'd say then would be to the CMT, use the California Mastitis Test on your high cows to find out what is the high quarter. You can also then do a culture test which will tell you more or less what's the best drug to use to treat the case of mastitis and where the, the strain of mastitis is coming from. If you have any other uh, problems, contact your local quality manager. Thank you, John. Now, most of the herds around the country are experiencing some form of soil moisture deficit and grass growth has certainly slowed down in many areas. So, who better than our own Maeve Regan to give us some really good advice on how to cope with the current situation on farm. According to Pasture Base Ireland figures this week, growth continues to be behind those growth rates recorded in this week last year in 2019. Again, a large variation recorded across the region with growth being extremely restricted in some areas where that soil moisture deficit has increased to 70 millimetres in some areas. Again, a large variation in growth being recorded right across the region and if we look specifically at pasture-based records for some research herds um, that have been taken over the last seven days, uh, a stark comparison between Kildalton and Johnstown Castle which had growth recorded of 43 and 50 kilos of dry matter per hectare per day respectively, in comparison with Moore Park and Ballyhays which had recorded growth of in excess of 80 kilos of dry matter per hectare per day. Again, those areas with an extreme soil moisture deficit having declining growth rates with very little forecast rain in the future few days, which may see that decline increase. Similarly, um, the same picture painted in a farm survey conducted with a representative group of 150 Glambia Ireland milk supplying group. Uh, growth re recorded over the last seven days varying between 20 and 85 kilos of dry matter per hectare per day. So the message is at the moment very farm specific and obviously tailoring the advice um, in regards to stretching that rotation to your farm specific scenario and the best option available to the farm setup at home. To walk the farm more regularly at least twice weekly to assess grass availability and growth rates occurring on the platform and also assess an average farm cover. Average farm cover should not fall below 500 kilos of dry matter per hectare in any circumstances. If we look specifically at data on Pasture Base Ireland, those farms that where average farm cover has fallen below the 500 kilo mark have seen growth decline by 30% over the past seven days. Again, assessing those pre target pre-grazing covers and trying to avoid the scenario where cows are being turned into covers less than 1100 kilos of dry matter per hectare. And the key message is to stretch that rotation length to the target of 24 to 25 days, ensuring that your demand matches the growth currently being achieved on the platform. Again, reducing stock numbers on the platform or, or removing surplus stock, bringing back in excess area previously closed for silage or surpluses. And where a deficit occurs or where demand is continuously exceeding growth, that deficit must be filled by either or increasing concentrate supplementation or introducing a silage or a forage buffer. In cases where soil moisture deficit increases or dry conditions continue over a period of time, it's important that, to keep in mind that early intervention is key. This will leave you with more options available to fill the deficit or gap occurring in the grass wedge and also will help curb the economic impact that this continued dry period may have. Thank you, Maeve. And that concludes this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it and got some really good information out of it. If you have any further questions on any of these topics, please contact your local Gambia representative or log on to gambiaconnect.com.